Yo, what's going on guys? I'm here with a Beyblade tutorial. So, if you guys haven't seen it already, I did make a video about the best Beyblade launcher, and that was the LR String Launcher by Takartomi. So, I love this launcher so much, and I really do think it's the best. However, it does have one major flaw, and it is that it will often get stuck in right spin. So, here is my LR String Launcher, or one of them at least. It is fully functional right now, but basically, after you use it a lot in right spin, it will just get stuck randomly, and the string will get stuck, and it won't budge. So, that's a big issue with this launcher, and it kind of happens from time to time. It happens more as you use your launcher more, so the more it gets worn, the more likely this will happen. And it's a big issue, however, it is fixable. So, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to take this launcher apart, how to reset the spring on the inside, and then how to put it back together. Uh, just one disclaimer is that if you're doing this tutorial, do it at your own risk. It's kind of hard to follow and it's a little bit complex. It's not just your basic average tutorial. It is a little bit difficult, so just be prepared. Anyway, we're going to get our materials right now. So you're only going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, just your basic Phillips head, the cross type or whatever, and then a flat or something with the flat edge. So I'm using this rip cord for the proto launcher. It's got a nice flat edge to it, and you need that to reset the spring. Your first step is gonna be just to take it apart. You're gonna to need to get four screws on the body and two screws on the switch. You wanna make sure you get all six because you can't take it apart without doing that. So we're gonna take them all out right now. And just a little bit of, an, of advice is to make sure you keep track where the screws are because they are pretty small and they can get lost. So just make sure where they end up. Also, be careful with the screws themselves. They are cheap, so they can get stripped or damaged. Be as careful as you can when taking this apart. All right, so these screws have all been loosened and it should just come apart. Um, some of the screws will fall out on their own, but it's no biggie. Uh, the first thing that will fall out for sure is this cover. And this is a cover for the switch. It's just basic plastic, whatever. The next step right now would be to get the other cover out. So that is actually a little bit difficult. It's held, or it has these little pegs on it that you really want to be careful with. You don't want them to snap. So you're going to carefully pop it out from both ends. Use a little bit of force, but not too much. And it should just pop off on its own. And this is the cover for the switch. Put that to the side. You won't need it till the last step. And now you got the launcher here with its screw still, whatever, but now you're going to take it apart from the top. I find it to be better if you do it from the top because you can carefully take out the internals and all that. So this screw is still holding it in place. Let's get these out for sure now. Okay, so now we'll come apart. So you guys can see the internals. It's pretty complex. You got this plastic part here. This is the mechanism for the switch, how to switch the directions on the launcher. Uh, you also won't need this till later. Kind of looks like a comb. Um, but now you got this. And the next step is to take out the cover here. Now this little, pla or this big plastic piece here, this is actually what holds all the internals in place. It's also the thing that you see on the outside. So this is really important. Um, but yeah, we're also going to put that to the side. And now we got the internals. So, um, if I were you, I would not mess with the internals much. The only thing you need to do really is to reset the spring. And this is the spring I'm talking about. If you guys just heard that, it just reset. There's a coil inside a metal coil that you guys need to retract um, in order for it to make the string come back every time you use it. So uh, we got the spring right here and we're gonna remove it right now. So of course the string is attached to it and you guys could see it. Um, but now we're going to reset the spring, and this is one of the most difficult steps it might take a few attempts, actually. Okay, so you're going to get this cover here. It's the top cover. You're also going to get this black piece right here, and you're going to set it down into the cover. It should line up perfectly. And now that you have it sitting there, you're going to get the spring. And as you guys can see, there's a little arrow on it. hope you guys can see that. That arrow is pointing counterclockwise, and you want to turn it that way so that the string can get shortened. You want to make it the right length, by the way. So you need it to be the right length so that it will sit perfectly in the launcher. So let's do that real quick. 
Okay, so if you guys see, there's this metal thing here. That needs to sit right there. And then the spring itself needs to sit like this. And basically, once you got it to about this length, it should fit like this. It should fit nice and perfect. But now we have to reset the spring. So if you guys see right now, the spring is fully into the launcher casing. But look at this part right here. It is fully horizontal, and that is important for resetting the spring. Uh, you're going to carefully lift the spring mechanism up so that it's not on the casing, but just kind of on it partially. And then you're going to reset the spring. So this is the tricky step, like I said. You're going to take the flat edge, this ripcord, or whatever you got, and then you're going to twist this counterclockwise seven to eight times. Now, I recommend seven to eight. If you do any more, you're kind of risking breaking the spring inside. So do it at your own risk. But you're going to do about seven or eight, but it's a little bit tricky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so once you get seven or eight, it should rest like this. Once again, horizontal. And now you got the spring reset with the string in place. And it should sit just like this. It should be perfect like that. And now we got to the trickiest part, and that is putting it back together. So we got these internals here. And as you can see, this thing falls off on its own. So you're basically going to sandwich everything together to the point where it just sits perfectly. And the problem with this is that oftentimes either this part will fall out or the spring will fall out. And this is just really tedious and annoying. I'm not going to lie with you guys. It's, it's going to take some practice and a few attempts. I might not even get it perfect on my first try. But you're going to... Sandwich it together and make sure it clicks in place. And if anything falls out, you're going to have to reset the spring and try this step again. And I know it's annoying, but that's just how it is. Um, don't worry about this switch, by the way. You can put it in later. But right now, we're going to try our first attempt. I might have to do this multiple times, but let's try this real quick. So I'd recommend holding the spring like this and putting this side inside. So this is going to go on top and it should just sandwich together. So here we go. Ooh, and I think it's good. Well, we gotta find out now. So we're gonna carefully remove the top cover now, this piece. And now we can see that it's perfectly locked in place. Um, you might have to move the string around so it sits perfectly again. Once again, look at that little piece right here. You need this metal piece right here to sit perfectly right there so that the string is in place. And now it should be good to go. Remember that switch though. We're gonna get that switch right here. There are two nubs right here, or two holes. This thing has a nub on it, and you're gonna set it onto one of the nubs. And it should line up like this. If you have it in the other direction, this is gonna be pushed forward, and then you're gonna to have to put it on the other hole so that it lines up with that. But in this case, it's in right spin, so it should sit like this. This is how it should end up like with the cover on it perfectly. Everything's secure. And now we got the top cover. We're gonna set it as carefully as we can. And now it's locked. So the string should retract at this point. And uh, just, just to test it out, don't move it around too much because if you mess up the spring again, then you're gonna have to redo all that. But now what we have to do is put it back together. They're the last parts. We're gonna start off with the cover. So this cover with the hole on it, that's for the words right here, so you're gonna set it down. You're gonna snap it in place with the pegs and the holes, and it should sit right there. Then we're gonna get the cover. Make sure you line it up correctly. It should set down. You might have to move it around a bit or snap it in place. And then you're gonna screw, or you're gonna retighten the screws on this. Once again, be gentle with these. Don't screw it in too tight, but just enough so that it's secure. And now we got the last four screws. All right, guys. So it should be good to go now. You guys could test it out. The string goes back, tried and left spin. It works perfectly. So now you are done with the tutorial. Give yourself a pat on the back because 
This is pretty difficult, I'm not gonna lie. It's a difficult tutorial, um, but if you do it a lot, you'll get the hang of it, trust me. It was just a little bit harder for me because I had to do it on camera, but um, it's pretty straightforward after you do it a few times. And if you guys ever forget, just come back to this video and hopefully you'll remember how to do it. But that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you comment down below if I helped you out. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, see ya. Whew.